I'm working on my Deathcore of Krieg army and of course I want to include Ghost Gaunts. Now you could have seen this video a while back where I kit bashed Gaunts Ghost and that is where they're standing right now. I slapped through the cloaks but they're coming. In the meantime I'm gonna paint Gaunt himself because I'm painting him in the same way that I paint all my other officer characters in the Death Corps of Krieg with black armor and brass uh, sort of armor plating and then some nice details. So he sprayed with Field Grau, which is a Vallejo spray can, which is almost black, but there's a little bit of blue in there and it's not exactly black. It's almost like a very, very dark gray. And I'm dry brushing all over the model with some Celestra gray. And I'm using this one, the green stuff number five dry brush, which is a nice round dry brush because I want this to go into the recesses. I don't just want to hit the highlights. I want to actually get some gray onto the coat as well. Now, after this dry brush, he gets a wash of Draconov Nightshade all over his coat. And Draconov Nightshade is a very, very dark blue, but it dries up even darker than when you apply it. So this will turn almost black with a nice little blue hue in the recesses. And this is also why I dry brushed so much gray, here, so much Celestra gray, sorry, on top of him, because that will mean that he actually gets some highlight. If you don't work bright enough with a dry brush, this track of nightshade will just completely darken everything and you'll lose all your highlights. Now this is a wash, so it needs to dry. And then next up, let's add some color with some Rune Lord brass for all of his armor pieces. So the chest plate, but also the shoulder pads. And then some corn red for all the red details, like this beautiful sash that makes him stand out on the battlefield while wearing a camo cloak. Absolute top Imperium right there. And of course his hat needs some red details too. And after that, all the cloth bits get some flayed one flesh on them. And this is also used for the gas mask. And I'm also gonna apply it to the hoses because it covers relatively well. I wanna make the hoses look a bit grimy and dirty as well. But flayed one flesh is okay to paint over black. I still need two coats, maybe three, but it's one of the better paints to use when you want to have some coverage. And after the flayed one flesh comes some, some easy desert for the boots. All of my Krieg army is wearing Timberlands. And using these bright colors on the boots and also on the, the wraps around his shins allows for a lot of dirt and mud and gore and so on to be painted on later. Now, otherwise, if this was just dark and I gave him black boots and everything would be brown and black already, then how am I gonna add mud in a later stage? So nice bright yellow Zamisi Desert for the boots. And after this, a bit of Doomball Brown for all of the leather straps. So his belt, but also the straps that go over the armor. And after that, it's time for the chainsword. That is going to need some work. Now, the original model has a little Aquila on the chainsword, but this one doesn't. Tiny Legends needs to work on Gon's Ghost chainsword. So instead, I'm gonna get some gold and paint the handguard and the pommel here a little bit with some Retributor armor. That way I still get some gold on the chainsword and it still shows that it is a better chainsword owned by a better man than most chainswords are. And next up, quickly dry brush the whole chainsword with some Stormhost silver. And I'm doing this pretty quick and pretty rough because I like the look of worn weapons and especially chainsword. I mean, you swing this at a massive tyranid or something, it's gonna get damaged no matter how careful you are with your chainsword. And I go all over the weapon, try to stipple on a little bit of battle damage everywhere. And it's fine if the tip has a lot more silver than sort of the bottom here, because that's the part that you would be hitting with. Now, I also want to paint the uh, cooling element that's here, or whatever, I believe it's the cooling element. And I'm going to do that with silver as well, but with a regular brush. Now, I want the hose of his gas masks to look awful. I want you to look at it and think, wow, I wouldn't want to breathe through that. And so for that, I first use a layer of rock art flesh. And then after that, it's time to start washing and uh, weathering and dirtying the model. Kind of the, the fun part of painting miniatures, at least for me. And we're starting with some Nihilac Oxide on all of the armor parts. And this is heavily diluted Nihilac Oxide because otherwise it is way too bright. I just want some in the recesses, even if those recesses mean against this sash. You know, it's just to accentuate the form and the shape of the details on this mini. And if the sash goes over the armor, and there's some of the oxide in that recess right here along the sash, so be it. It just gives it a little accent, gives a little more depth to the miniature because right now everything is super flat because it's lacking washes and it's lacking weathering. 
So all of the armor parts just get a very light layer of this nylock oxide and I'll focus especially around all of these parts that are sort of jutting out of the armor. So this strip over here is sticking out, there are bolts here on the side, they get a little bit extra and the rest just gets a very thin layer all over. Now after this armor and the nylock oxide we move on to a Thonian camo shade on this hose. Like I said I want it to look nasty, I want it to look worn out, I want you to think when you look at that I wouldn't want to have that in my face. So the Thonian camo shade is a dirty green wash and it's perfect to make things look old and worn and especially good for sort of old plastics or PVC or old rubber to make it look awful. And then some Agrax Earth Shade on the gold of the chain sword, and that will really dull it down and make it look a lot more worn. And even though there's no recesses, if I use Agrax Earth Shade on here, it won't show up on the edges of this handguard. And that will make it look like the edges are still shiny and still a bit golden, while the rest is really getting tarnished and worn. Next, it's time for streaking grime. Grimdark in a pot, as it often is called, and it's absolutely not wrong. Now, Streaking Grime is an enamel, so you have to work slightly different than you would do with the acrylics from Games Workshop, because it doesn't mix with water. If you want to thin it down, you need some white spirits, or if you want to wash it off, you can use white spirits as well. That's the beauty of these enamel paints. You can put them on and then later take some white spirits and just wash off whatever excess is on the mini. And that way you can sculpt kind of with your paints and it means that you don't have to worry too much about hitting the wrong bits because you can basically rub it off with enough white spirits. Now what I'm doing is I'm starting at the bottom of the mini because of course that's the most dirty part, that's the part that's closest to the bombed out battlefield and then slowly work my way up and the higher I get on the mini the less of the streaking grime I use. But I definitely want to use it to accentuate everything and put it in the recesses of everything. Now imagine Gaunt's Ghosts have been on the battlefield for a long time and they are covered in mud and dirt so even the top part of them, the, the face mask, the helmets, everything is covered in grime. And so I work slowly up towards the mini and slowly put it in all of the recesses everywhere. And it gives shading and this means I don't really need to do any more shading and it gives me also a good opportunity to ask you to like and subscribe if you like these videos. I'm making more and more conversion videos and I'm talking a lot about bits, kits and proxies as well. So if you're into that kind of stuff, subscribe. Um, my next step is gonna be basing where I put some sterling mud on the base first and then I'm gonna press in some dead Cadian bits and I've got a lot of bits here I'm just gonna pick a few at random and press them into the mud and the dirt to make sure that they are actually onto the base and deep down into the mud as well and I'm gonna add a little bit more just one helmet is not enough shall we do another head yeah why not here's one with an actual face in it and we're just gonna put this one right next to it like that. I think that's a good positioning. And then just add a little bit of the Sterling mud around the base of the head and the helmet just to make it sort of stick in the mud. And after this I'm gonna let the Sterling mud dry a bit and then I quickly paint the Cadian bits with some Militarum green contrast paint followed by contrast Grift Charger grey for the skin and then a little Typhus corrosion to make these helmets look just a little bit more weathered. Followed by some more Sterling mud because normally when you apply these textures it's like a smooth base layer and just a tiny amount. But I want this base to look out like it's the bombed no man's land that the Krieg is fighting over. So I'm just going to add some globs of the texture paste here and there so that I can get a little bit more relief in the base. A little more height, a little more sort of hills, a little more valleys as well. Uh, because after this I can use puddles from AK Interactive to add some puddles to this base. And puddles is just a glossy paint so it dries up looking still wet and it's a little bit dirty so it's great for adding these dirty puddles onto your bases. And I'm just gonna also apply some of it to here, the mud, make it look wet. It just gives this glossy shine that makes it look wet. Now I think he needs a little bit more on his base. Next I'm gonna do some barbed wire. And this is really amazing stuff. This comes from Green Stuff World. And I'll put a link down below in the description. And you just wrap it around a pen or one of your brushes, cut it to size, and then you can glue it onto the base. And after this I'm just gonna go over it with some typhus corrosion and this will make it look nice and rusty 
and also darken it up. And it's a good way to also cover up these blotches here of the super glue. Apparently the base wasn't completely dry. I glued this down with super glue and you get this reaction where there's this chunk of white, almost plastic like material sticking up. But Types Corrosion and Sterling Mud are almost the same color. So hey, easy cover up job, no problem. You can't see it anymore. Now after this, it's time for the cloak. Because just like my Gaunt's Kriegers, Kriegers Ghosts, like, I don't know, you know, Gaunt's Ghosts in Krieg form, this guy needs a cloak as well. And for the cloak, I'm using this cheesecloth. And I happen to have cheesecloth, you can also use a gauze bandage. And I sprayed it with two different kinds of greens, some kind of Death Guard green and Goblin green. And now I'm just going to cut it to size, make a nice little cloak of it, out of it, and see if I can fit it on him. And this is the shape I got to. Now before putting it on his back, I spray it with a little bit of watered down PVA glue. And this will make it a little bit more rigid than just the cloth. That helps me to sculpt it a little bit. And it will seal it a little bit as well, so that it doesn't suck up all the paint that I'm going to put on there. Now I've already done my regular Kriegers, my ghosts for Gaunt. And I already used the cloak there as well, and I saw that it still soaked up a lot of the paint. So maybe my mixture is too much water, not enough glue, or maybe it's just unavoidable. Now this thing is really soaked, so I'm going to leave it to dry for a little bit. And then I'm going to see if I can shape it onto his shoulders. Okay, let's see. I got the cloak here. I got a little silicon sculpting brush, also from Green Stuff World. That will help me just put it in place a little easier. Now, first thing, I have to get it over his shoulder. And that's going to be hard because that chainsaw is blocking everything. So I already rolled up this tip and I'm trying to just shove it through and then pull it through on the other side. And I think a little toothpick can help me push it through. See, the chainsaw is touching the hat, so I can't just come from the top. I really have to poke it here through this tiny hole and try to get it out through the other side so I can wrap it around his neck and at least make it look like the cloak is somehow attached to the front of him and it's going around his neck and it's not just on the armor. Although maybe that's just the only way I can fit this thing in here because I don't think I'll get it all the way through. Now I'm going under the hose. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. It would make more sense if the hose go under the cloak. But again, the hose is already in place, so I can't really get there with the cloak. I'm going to leave this uh, sort of filtration thingy of the uh, gas mask, I'm going to leave that one uh, visible, because that's also the case on my Kriegers. And then I'm just going to sculpt the cloak a little bit to make it flow around his body a bit more sort of naturally. Now it goes on his arm and over his shoulder, and then I want to have it flat down and maybe have it billow in the wind a little bit. Let's see, a little fold over the edges. That always makes it look a little bit more natural. And all the way down to the ground. I always feel that these camo cloaks, they don't reach down far enough. I think the only ones with proper camo cloaks are Space Marine Eliminators, where the cloak goes all the way to the ground. But for the rest, they're just too short. How are you going to hide your shiny boots if you don't have a cloak that goes all the way back to the ground? Now I'm going to let this dry. And then it's time for streaking grime because this cloak is way too bright and due to the cheesecloth and the PVA glue not really sealing at all, it's going to soak up a lot of this streaking grime. But I'm going to use this to sort of darken down the edges, especially the parts where the green paint didn't really hit the cheesecloth, but also to give it some blotches and some spots, a little bit of a camo pattern, and also just to make sure that the fringes of the cloak are really, really dirty. Now, this has been dragging through the mud for a while. Maybe that's why those camo cloaks don't go all the way to the ground. But in this case, it's going to pick up a lot of dirt. And after this, it's time for some gore, I think. Because these perfectly clean chain swords, that won't do in my army. I got a little bit of zombie gore here, and that's from the two thin coats line. And it's a bit darker than Blood for the Blood God. And I started to like this a lot to first put a layer of this on there. It's kind of like dried up blood. It still sort of dries up a little bit glossy. So there's still a little bit of shine to it, but it's just a little bit darker. And I think it's a nice one to start with. And then we finish it off with a little bit of blood for the blood god, just to get that little bright, fresh blood on there as well. And not only have caked blood on there. And then he looks like this. And I'm quite happy with the results. The black and the brass work really well together. They contrast nicely with the red from the Commissar colors. 
it's an easy paint scheme that has just a handful of paints. And I'm going to paint all my officers like this, but with brass helmets, so they're easy to pick out from a distance and easy to pick up when the plasma pistols explode. And of course, Commissar Gaunt is joined by his ghost right here, so they can go on the tabletop now and score lots and lots of points for me. And I think it worked out pretty well, this whole conversion. They really look like Krieg soldiers rather than the regular Gaunt's ghosts. Uh, but still, it's pretty clear that they do something special. The camo cloaks really make that work. And the, uh, the unique paint scheme for my Kriegers, they also help. They're blue. Everything else in my army is going to be gray, green, brown, black, but not this midnight blue. So it really sets them apart. If you enjoyed this video, well, maybe you want to see some more of my Krieg army grow as I'm painting it. I'm doing science, kit bashed, of course. I'm doing tanks, I'm doing artillery, I'm doing regular Kriegers. And I gotta figure out what I'm gonna proxy as my Katachans and maybe Cadians if I ever run Cadians, but Katachans for sure. I need to come up with a solution there. And if you enjoyed this video, check out this one next.